Alright, I'm back. What's up, YouTube? This is your boy Alex. I'm back doing back to back YouTube videos. Alright, this one's gonna be called Sex Game Hot Sexiest Latina Women in Television and Film. And yes, it's for women and for men. Yes, Mamacita. Yes, this is L.A.V.B. Poppy. Sexy Mamacita. And we're going to talk about some of the most beautiful, most attractive, sexy Latina women in all of television and film and celebrate their accomplishments in television and film. It's nice to look in the category of television and film and pay tribute to all women. Part one, we did one for the white women that was like mixed. Part two, it was Asian women. Today's part three of my series, this is Latina women. Part four is where I do the series finale where I'm going to finish it off with black women. So black women, I hope you're um, happy and excited because the next video is going to be the sexiest black women in television and film and their contributions to Hollywood. Every group of women is going to get some respect. And from the men that watch the videos, I'm going to start a brand new series for men because I know men are watching these videos going, what about black men? What about Latino men? What about Asian men? What about us? Relax, I got y'all back, okay? I got y'all back, fellas. You know you know the old saying, women are first. I'm doing women first, then I'm gonna switch over to the black men. I ain't forgot about black men's contributions in television and film. I ain't forgot about white men's contributions in television and film. I have not forgot about Latino men and Asian men's contribution in television and film. One video at a time. There's only seven days a week. I don't want to make two or three videos in one day. That would be like way too many videos in one day. And then people won't get a chance to watch the other videos. And then I move too fast. That's a big complaint that I got last year is that I make too many videos too fast. And I don't get a chance. I don't give nobody a chance to watch the videos for at least two to three days to see if they like the video or don't like the video. And when I make good content, I want it to be good content. So I'm just trying to make sure we're all on the same page. We have a good understanding. I got one more video after this. The next time I come back on here, it's going to be for black women. Then I'm going to start a completely brand new series. We're going to go into television and film again, and it's going to be men's accomplishments in television and film and filmmaking. So that when everyone gets some respect, we're going to start things correct and right in 2021. Right now, this is for the mamacitas. You know, this is me, Ella B. Poppy, showing the mamacitas Latinas, sex game, hot, sexy Latina women in television and film. All right, coming in at number eight is Michelle Rodriguez. Now, I find her very physically sexually attractive. She's been doing this for two and a half decades. She has an impressive resume. She's been in like four franchises. Most actors and actresses are usually in one or two. She's in four franchises, Fast and Furious, that's one, uh, Machete, that's two, I guess you could include Resident Evil as a franchise, that's three, and then the fourth one is Avatar, so she, at one point she was a part of four franchises. Now, she did a movie called Girl Fight, which got her into Resident Evil, and then it also capped off a popular character, and that's Letty. Now, I still hope that Van Diesel actually takes this opportunity to one day watch my video and give all the fans that have been asking for, for years, a Fast and Furious spinoff movie with Letty. I mean, think about it. Her character is just as big and as important to all the other characters in the fraction for, um, Fast and Furious franchise. If Dwayne The Rock Johnson can get his own spinoff movie called Hobbs and Shab and a potential sequel, why not do the same thing for Michelle Rodriguez in Letty? You could put it on FX and call it FX Fast and Furious Chapter 1 something Letty. To show how she got into street racing. Like, they told the story, but you know when they do that, eventually later they come back and they make a movie. Like, Fast and Furious 3 Tokyo Drift was good because it explained how Hans got to where he was in Fast and Furious 4, 5. And then, of course, his timely demise, supposed. And then they brought him back in the next film that showed he never really was gone to begin with. So you can put twist and turns and keep them going... You know, we may not see the main characters no more, but Letty is a character I think people would be interested. 
but I would love to see her character from Machete get a television show. I mean, she was good in those two movies, and anytime I be messing with sexy mamacitas, I could see some Michelle Rodriguez in them. That's probably why I like sexy Latina women so much. I like the sexiness, I like the sassiness, the badass, they talk back, they communicate, they let me know they right here, they don't care if you six feet tall and you bench press 300 pounds, they're not afraid of you, they got, the, they got that fire, they got that passion. That's what I like about sexy mamacitas, that passion. I mean, not only did they know how to cook some food and they are multicultural, sing, they can dance, they can play sports. They got, they're passionate women. They're strong, passionate women. You know, so that's what I like about Michelle Rodriguez. She takes every approach in all her movie roles, whether it's television or film, whether it's her popping up in the music video, whether it's her doing martial arts, she takes everything she does serious at 100%. And sometimes will go as far as to go 110%. And all you could do is show that person nothing but great respect. Coming in at number seven is Sofia Varga. Yeah, I do have a crush on her because of those shampoo commercials, her television show. You know, she done movies, television shows. She was a model. And, of course, I loved her in the second movie of Machete. I just wish she could have got a bigger role than she got. Um, hopefully, Robert, hopefully, Robert Rodriguez bring her back for a Machete 3 or in a Machete television spinoff. I mean, the best parts of that movie was... Her character, like the fact that she did stuff that was so edgy, so hardcore, so in your face, and the way she was screaming at Machete, I actually thought it was hot because she in there going off Machete, and it's like this woman is hot. She attractive, and she looks good for her age. Like this woman is like in her mid forties to early fifties, and she's very physically sexually attractive. You know, you can tell this woman takes care of herself. She eats her fruits and vegetables. She drinks a lot of water. You know, she stays in athletic shape. And she could multitask. Like, she can play multiple characters if the situation calls for it. Coming in at number six is Eva Mendez. Now, this is my best friend's crush. It's a good thing um, he watched my YouTube videos. I hope his girlfriend don't find out that he has a crush on Eva Mendez because... Um, it wouldn't look good for my best friend, but even Mendez has been acting for like two and a half decades. I like all her movies. Doesn't matter if her movies are good. Her movies are bad. I liked her when she was in Urban Legend. Um, I liked her in both Fast Furious films. It's unfortunate her character was only in two films. I thought her character had a lot of promise, a lot of potential. Um, she's been in romantic comedy movies. One of her best romantic comedies is Hitch with Will Smith. So she could do action. She could do comedy. I also liked her in Once Upon a Time in Mexico with Johnny Depp. Great chemistry on camera. She can hang with the big Hollywood heavyweights, you know, out of time with Denzel Washington, Training Day. So she gets in those big budget movies. Now, she's been in some movies that weren't that good, The Spirit, but I enjoyed her in The Spirit. She, she was right there with Scarlett Johansson, who later went off to become Latasha Black Widow and Samuel Jackson. So she can hang with the big heavyweights and she can hold her own. And she gets into the movies. And you can tell that she's pretty good at whatever movie they give her. She's good at taking the approach to those characters, whatever they may be. Coming in at number five is Selma Haya. Now, I've seen her in person. I told y'all the story. Once upon a time, I used to work at the Grove doing security at a store that I can't tell you the name of because last thing they need is to see this YouTube video and they be like, okay, we're going to have to go get him because he tell them too much. But Selma Haya looked good for her age. I ain't going to lie. If I was a multi-millionaire, George Clooney knows what I'm talking about. Antonio Banderas know what I'm talking about. Robert Rodriguez himself know what I'm talking about. If I was close to her age, rich and famous, I would holler at her. I would actually ask her out to lunch and dinner. Most men are too scared and afraid to open their mouths and go after their favorite Hollywood crush. All the women you see on this list are, for the most part, is going to come to surprise to you is my Hollywood crushes when it comes to sexy Latina women. Now, I do have crushes on other races of women. You've seen the videos are getting made, obviously. But Selma Hayek did a movie called Dust Till Dawn, and one of the best points of that movie 
was the way she could mesmerize you. And she had to be very confident because she had the snake around her. I don't like snakes. The first sign I see a snake, I'm running. You, you, you can call me a punk. You can call me a coward. All that all you want. The first sign I see a snake, I'm, I'm running for the hills. Because I don't like snakes. I'm like, um, I'm like Harrison Ford's character from um, Indiana Jones. I hate snakes. Yes, you heard me. I hate snakes. But my point was that was the best part of that movie. And uh, the fact that Quentin Terrace character in the movie was so mesmerized, whatever the characters felt in the movie, George Clooney, you felt what he felt. You know, that intense scene, the action. And, of course, she was in Wild Wild West with um, Kevin Klein and um, Will Smith. She's been in romantic comedy movies. And she's been in movies like The Faculty. So she has a huge resume of movies. And the fact that she got some curves on her is is very attractive for a woman of her stature. And I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure a lot of men marvel when they see her in person. All right, coming in at number four is going to be Kate Delilla Casaletto. I apologize if I butchered your name, sexy mamacita. This is Leb Poppy. And um, she was in a movie called Bad Boys 3. Now, she's a big-time actress back where she comes home. She's been acting for, like, almost three decades. She's been in plenty of movies, television shows, commercials. She's a model. And she was very good in Bad Boys 3. Like, the fact that made her a villain. Like, in all the Bad Boy movies, all the villains were men, right? For the first time... Michael Bay went in a completely different direction for Bad Boys 3. We're going to make one of the villains, or actual villains, we're going to make it a woman. And it was good for Will Smith's character because it kind of tied in his character full circle. And what made the movie good was the fact that this is a villain that knows his strengths and his weaknesses, where in Bad Boys 1 and 2, the villains could never figure out Will Smith's character's weaknesses, but this woman figures his weaknesses out, and it kind of, it, it's kind of like a good take on the characters, because they're going into a different direction, you know, you get to see those elements into the movie, and she did a good job, unfortunately, her character's gone, it would have been nice if her character could have been in a Bad Boys 4, now, I do believe she'll pop up in other big-time franchises, because she's a talented actress, and her work in the movie was phenomenal. And you could tell she's also an exotic beauty. All right, coming in at number three is Pablo Nazinia. I apologize if I messed up your name, Sexy Mamacita. She also was in Bad Boys 3 for Life. She actually played the love interest of Will Smith's character in the movie. And that incredible scene where she wearing that sexy yellow dress and Will Smith be looking like, damn, she fine as hell. That's the type of reaction I had when I saw the movie. It's like, damn, she's fine. But my point is, you can tell that she's good at playing multiple characters. And the fact that she got to be one of the main characters in the movie, and she was phenomenal. She was in athletic shape. You could tell she's serious. She can play serious characters. She could play comedy characters. And this is someone I, that I, I see moving forward in big time movies like i can see that she might pop up in a marvel movie she might pop up in a dc film she might pop up in another big time action franchise who knows tom Cruise might pick the phone up and say hey i, I just wrote the script to mission impossible 8 you want to be in it you may never know she might pop up in a future james bond film you may never know sky's the limit for her um coming in at number two is roseanne sachez kiss now, my dad actually met her twice when he used to be a mailman once upon a time in Hollywood. And she's very physically sexually attractive. We've seen her in Devious Maids, but we recognize her from Rush Hour 2 or 2007's You Make Me Better with Fabulous. Remember that song with Fabulous? And she pop up in the middle of the song at the dining club and Fabulous in there rapping? Yeah, she was in the video. And... Not only that she's done television and film and she can sing, she can dance, she's put out at least five or six albums. Yeah, she, she, she multi-talented. And for her to be in her late 40s, mid 50s, she don't age. I'm telling you, she must got some superpowers because this woman has been around for two and a half decades and she's still fine as hell. So 
like, damn. All right, coming in at number one is Jennifer Lopez. You don't make a video called the sexiest Latino women in television and film, and you don't include Jennifer Lopez. That's a crime. I don't want no sexy mamacitas chasing me 15, 20 blocks because I forgot Jennifer Lopez. Now, she's been around for two and a half decades, close to three. She's been in movies, television shows, TV talk shows, and just recently she just did her first um, skincare product. Do you know anybody that can do television and film, be on two or three TV talk shows, do this for three and a half decades, and then turn around and get their own skin treat products called J Lo Skin Care? That's an impressive resume in itself. We gotta show Jennifer Lopez some mad respect. Plus, she's a hot mom. You heard me. I said it. She's a hot mom. So these are the eight women that I find very physically, sexually attractive. The sexiest Latina women in television and film, celebrating and respecting their contributes in television and film. And the very next video is going to be Black women in film. So next time, peace.